The grasshopper sparrow is a, a, a very small, secretive species of Amadramus sparrow found in the dry prairies of central Florida. There's only a handful of locations where they're currently located. The Florida grasshopper sparrow is a, it's mostly terrestrial sparrow, so sometimes we like to think of them more like mice than birds. Um, they don't spend a lot of time off the ground. You know, from afar, the Florida grasshopper sparrow uh, looks like just a brown drab bird, and it's easy to pass it off as that. Uh, most of the time you see it, it's just flushing away, but it's actually very beautiful. It's, it's got brown coloring, uh, more rusty coloring. Because they're so terrestrial and difficult to see, um, a lot of people can't appreciate how beautiful they are. Um, but in the hand or up close, they're really strikingly beautiful. They have a lot of yellow uh, on the crown and beautiful contrasting grays and blacks and whites in the back. So they're really a stunning bird. Grasshopper sparrows eat uh, mostly insects. Uh, we've seen them carrying a lot of grasshoppers and caterpillars and crickets to their nestlings. It's thought that the Florida grasshopper sparrow is called a grasshopper sparrow for two reasons. One, because they eat a lot of grasshoppers, but then also their song is very high-pitched trill uh, that sounds reminiscent of an insect song. Central Florida dry prairie has experienced 95% decline in total area that it would normally encompass in this, um, in this region. So one of the biggest causes of decline for the Florida grasshopper sparrow is widespread habitat loss. So they're critically endangered and they're very dependent on that dry prairie habitat. In addition to widespread habitat loss, the Florida grasshopper sparrow uh, struggles with high rates of nest predation in the wild. We estimate that there are less than 50 breeding pairs of Florida grasshopper sparrows remaining in the wild, so they're very critically endangered at this point. Uh, the largest population is at Three Lakes Wildlife Management Area. There's another population on uh, Avon Park uh, Air Force Range, and there's another very small population on, on a private land. But all of these populations have declined uh, drastically and there's other places where they once were incredibly numerous and uh, th there's none there now. In 2015 White Oak partnered with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Tall Timbers Research Station and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to recover the species of Florida grasshopper sparrow. 2016 we started producing a large number of offspring uh, these offspring were obviously bred in very large naturalistic enclosures, so they, they're pretty well suited to be released and well adapted to the wild already. When deciding which individuals uh, to collect for captive breeding, we work closely with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and uh, the two captive programs. So our research has shown that nest survival is very low in the wild, um, but the captive breeding is useful because nest survival rates are even higher in captivity. Um, and what we're really doing by bringing birds in captivity is releasing their full reproductive potential. White Oak has been a really fantastic partner working closely with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and FWC. Um, we're constantly bouncing ideas back and forth about how to make the outdoor flight pens at White Oak uh, as close to wild conditions as possible. So a lot of White Oak staff have visited the field site and they've tried to match the grass types and the food types that the wild birds are eating. It's been a really great collaboration. A lot of people ask why we should save the Florida grasshopper sparrow, especially uh, because it's such a tiny bird that a lot of people haven't even heard of before. And I, I have two reasons. The first being that uh, I do think that they're just inherently valuable as a part of Florida's uh, biodiversity. And uh, whenever one animal in Florida is at risk, um, it's indicative of you know, larger problems in the ecosystem that we need to pay attention to and try to resolve. I also think that um, the research that we're doing on the Florida grasshopper sparrow will have long-term implications for other dry prairie species. To help recover the Florida grasshopper sparrow, obviously support the effort currently underway. Um, so whether that's supporting the captive breeding programs or the service, Fish and Wildlife Service or FWC, uh, there's various uh, pathways for you to support those programs. We have to save the Florida grasshopper sparrow. This is our sparrow. If we lose it, I think we all lose a little piece of ourselves. <laughs>